Good morning, scholars, and welcome back to Learning with Mrs. Preeby. Today we're working on Lesson 6, George Washington, Commander-in-Chief. And our learning goal is, I can describe the connection between the Declaration of Independence and its effect on the Continental Army. Oh, we sure have learned a lot about the history of our great country, the United States of America, and in the beginning, we talked about how there were Native Americans were already here on the land when Christopher Columbus, here he is, this is just one version, one picture of Christopher Columbus. So uh, Christopher Columbus came to the United States. He thought he was going to, do you remember where he thought he was going? To India. That's why he called the Native Americans Indians. And then the pilgrims came right here. The pilgrims came to the United States after that. That's where we get the great feast, the, the Thanksgiving feast, feast came from. And then several other uh, mostly British people came over. And they established these 13 colonies. And remember, this is now Maine, but it used to be part of Massachusetts. So all of that was Massachusetts. This NH stands for New Hampshire. The NY stands for New York. RI stands for Rhode Island. The CONN stands for Connecticut. The NJ stands for New Jersey. PA for Pennsylvania. DEL for Delaware. MD. For Maryland, VA for Virginia, NC for North Carolina, SC for South Carolina, and GA for Georgia. So those were the first 13 colonies of uh, the United States here. None of this were states at the time. They were all areas owned by Native Americans in the beginning. And then if we remember this, this was the Boston Tea Party. Not probably the kind of tea party you have with your friends or your parents. Okay, and then this is Paul Revere who went to tell the people what? The red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. And when he said red coats, he was referring to the British soldiers. So the mil the Minutemen got together and fought them in the Revolutionary War. And then we have the Declaration of Independence right here. So that happened next. And then the last thing we talked about was how we got the American flag. I wonder if you can remember who that lady was that made the first American flag. All right. Let's see. I'm going to show you a short video about her right here. Oh, good day. Hold on. Let me back that up a little bit. This is... A video of Betsy Ross's house. Oh, good day, friends. Welcome to my upholstery shop. Did you come to buy something today? Perhaps some um, curtains or pillows or maybe some cushions for your furniture? Oh, I have the finest fabrics for you to choose from. From England and France, of course, so they are a bit expensive. But if you need anything to decorate your house, you could take a look about the shop and pick out your favorite fabric. No, you don't want to buy anything today. Well, I don't blame you with this revolution going on. There's more important things to spend your money on than fancy fabrics from England. Did you perhaps need a flag for your Navy ship? You are aware that I'm a fine flag maker, yes? Now, I do make flags that are made of stars and stripes and red, white, and blue. Were you interested in one of these? 13 stars and stripes, representing our 13 colonies, of course fine design for a flag, but I did not come up with it. George Washington came here to this upholstery shop with a drawing of what this flag was supposed to look like, and I followed the drawing slightly. 
But you see, I wanted him to change something about that drawing. General Washington, he had asked if I could put six points around each and every one of those stars for the fly. Six pointed stars, that's what he wanted. But I'm a smart businesswoman, so I told him no to six pointed stars. They were going to take too long to make. He wanted this flag finished as fast as possible, after all, so I suggested a change to the stars. Perhaps, I told him, if he allowed me to put five points on each of those stars, I could finish that flag in a fast time. Now, he wanted to know exactly what I meant, so I told him I would show him, demonstrate exactly how fast and easy those five-pointed stars are. Now, would you like to see how fast and easy it is to cut out those five pointed stars? I will show you. You will be so impressed. Start with a rectangle, fold it in half. Take the top corner, fold it to the center, fold over that long bottom to meet in the middle, and then fold the last part down so it all lines up nice and even. Now take your scissors, make one snip at a nice angle, and open that piece of paper up. And there's your five-pointed star. Now, of course, a flag for General Washington or a flag for your Navy ship cannot be made out of paper, would not survive very long on the battlefield. But I will fold and cut my fabric the same way as this paper to make all the stars for the flags that I need. So how many flags will you like in your order? I'll get on them right away. Betty Ross. Oh, that was a great video. Was that actually Bet Betty R Betsy Ross? No, that was not actually her. That was a recreation of what it might have been like back then. And that, that might have actually been her house, but that certainly wasn't Betsy Ross there. Okay, so they're, they're showing you what it would have been like to live back then. Probably can go and visit that place. All right. So I want you to think about what the title of this story is. In case you have forgotten, this is George Washington, Commander-in-Chief. Take a look at this picture right here. Think, predict what you think might happen in today's story. Okay. Listen carefully to find out whether or not your predictions about this next event um, in the creation of the United States is correct. So this is what you think is going to happen. The next event you think might happen. You will remember that while my, while the representative to the Second Continental Congress met and signed the Declaration of Independence, George Washington was far away from Philadelphia. What was that Declaration of Independence? Right, it was declaring our freedom from Britain. He was sent north to Boston to fight the British. His was a very difficult job. Washington's army was made up mostly of farmers with no military experience at all. And they had no uniforms and only old guns called muskets, which they hardly knew how to fire. There weren't enough guns and there was hardly any gunpowder. The wording of the Declaration of Independence was approved on July 4, 1776. Five days later, messengers carrying copies of the Declaration reached New York, where General Washington Armies was camped. His army heard the words and rallied in support of the independence. A statue of King George was melted down into bullets for the Continental Co Army. How do you think the army felt when they heard the declaration? I'll bet they were pretty excited. The men soon realized that they would never have enough bullets for the fight ahead. Later that summer, British warships were spotted entering New York's harbor. King George had gotten help from the Germans as well. Germans are... People who are from Germany, another country in the continent of Europe. So let's see if this doesn't. So right here, 
If this was, oh, let me see. All right. If this was where Great Britain was, and now here's Germany. So Germans are from Germany, okay? More than 30,000 trained troops arrived to fight the unprepared colonial militiamen. Mil George Washington nearly lost his army in the fierce fighting around New York and New Jersey that, fell, that fall. The Redcoats chased the Continental Army south across the Delaware River. Thinking that they had scared them off, the Redcoats left only a small force to guard them on the other side of the river. It was December, and they felt sure that nobody would fight during the dead of winter, but they were wrong. What do you think the colonists did? Let's find out. George Washington came up with a daring plan. Daring means courageous. On Christmas night, he gathered his men together. It was snowy and cold, but Washington had the men get into their boats and row quietly across the ice-filled river. More than 2,000 soldiers crossed the river. The crossing took nine hours. Marching through the wind and sleet of the December cold, the Continental Army reached the British troops just before dawn, while the Redcoats were still sleeping. Washington's men launched a surprise attack on the enemy camp. The Redcoats were surprised, all right. Some of them came out of their bunks in their underwear and just held up their hands. It was a total victory for General Washington. Nobody in his army had been killed. Washington and his army returned to Philadelphia to shouts of joy, but the war wasn't over yet. The Continental Congress knew they needed more help in order to win the war for their war, war for independence. German soldiers were fighting alongside the British. Perhaps the French would send soldiers across the ocean to help the colonists fight against the British. It was no secret that the French and British had long been enemies. The French are people who are from France, another country on the continent of Europe. So let's see if we can find that one right here. Here's our map. So this is Germany, and here's France. Remember, the United Kingdom was Great Britain at that time. The Cotton of Congress decided to send some men, men to France to ask for their support. Their chief representative was 70-year-old Benjamin Franklin. Who was Benjamin Franklin? Okay, we need to look see. Okay, let's see if we can find Benjamin Franklin. Here he is. He was part of the, the Second Continental Congress. He was the gentleman that had gone over to the king to try to get him to stop taxing the colonies. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. There we go. The French did not like to lose in battle. And they were still angry about losing to the British in an earlier war. At first, they did not want to support the colonists. It was crazy to think an army of farmers could defeat one of the greatest armies in the world, the British Army. Army. If you defeat someone, you win. But an American victory in New York in the fall of 1777 changed their opinion overnight. They promised gunpowder soldiers, and ships. In 
General Washington's army was camped in Pennsylvania at a place called Valley Forge during the winter of 1777 and 1778. Snow lay on the ground when Washington and his men arrived. They pitched tents and built log cabins, that, but neither kept out the cold. The men were dressed in rags, and many of them had no shoes, walking barefoot in the snow. There was hardly any food, and some days the men had little to eat and drink, other than bread and water. Disease spread through the camp, and many men died. The men missed their families and wanted to go home. Washington struggled to keep the men's to keep up his men's spirits. Washington worked really hard to keep his men from quitting. He camped in a tent beside them for a time, earning their respect. No battles were fought at the Valley Forge that winter, but the cold and hungry men spent hours training to be ready when they met the British again in the spring. Were your predictions about what happened next and the formation of the United States as a new colony correct? Mm, I know mine weren't. Um, how did you describe George Washington? How would you describe George Washington as a commander-in-chief? He was very brave, and he was a good leader, and he, he earned the men's respect which was important, right? Why were George Washington and his army willing to fight the Redcoats? Well, I think if it came time, you know, if you were fighting for your freedom, then you might also fight the Redcoats, right? So... How did the Declaration of Independence make George Washington's soldiers feel? What did they do after they heard it? It did make them want to fight for independence. And they melted the statue of King George to use for bullets. And they started winning some of their battles, right? All right. In this read aloud, you heard, Washington struggled to keep up his men's spirits. Say the word struggled. Struggle means they had difficulty working very hard to accomplish something. I struggled to get up the steps with a heavy box. Have you ever struggled with a task? I want you to go ahead and pause the video and talk to somebody that's there with you about something that you have struggled with. Remember when you talk to them, you should use a complete sentence and the word struggled. Did you talk, did you pause the video and talk to somebody about it? What word were we going to talk about? Oh, right, struggled. Have you ever struggled to get out of bed in the morning? I have not struggled to get out of bed in the morning. Have you ever struggled with cleaning your room? I didn't struggle cleaning my room. But I did when I was young. So, so I guess I could say that I have struggled with cleaning my room. Have you ever struggled to find something? Oh, uh, last week I was looking for a sock and I was struggling to find my sock. Have you ever struggled to wait your turn? Sometimes it's hard to wait my turn. I have struggled to wait my turn. All right. I want you to think about the read-alouds that we've heard in the New Nation. I would like you to choose one of those read-alouds. Go ahead and go back to that read-aloud and re-watch it. Choose one, any one that you like the most, and go ahead and re-watch that one. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Today's learning goal was I can describe the connection between the Declaration of Independence and its effect on the Continental Army.
Again, thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.